Hey guys, welcome to the video for graphing point slope by solving for y. Our unit is 3a and our essential question is why are multiple representations important? So for this unit, I'm primarily going to have the essential question be the same because we are learning different representations, um, which are different forms of linear equations. So the three forms of linear equations are in unit three and the only ones that we learn are slope intercept form, point slope form, and standard form. So we've spent a few days talking about slope intercept form, so now we're gonna start talking about point slope form. We covered that slope intercept form. It's called slope intercept form because it gives us a slope and an intercept. So if we're talking about point slope form, it's gonna give us a point and a slope. So point slope form looks like this, and I would uh, recommend that you watch before you actually write down anything. It's y minus y1, equals m times x minus x1, okay? So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So go ahead and write that down. That is point slope form. So again, with slope intercept form, it gives us a slope and a y-intercept. That's why it's called slope intercept form. Point slope form gives us a point and a slope, and we'll use that to graph t on the next lesson, but for this lesson, we're still gonna use that knowledge of slope intercept to help us. So I just want to remind you, remember m means slope, right? So go ahead and write slope here, but it, that means the same thing. That's going to be your slope, okay? Now, you're probably wondering what those ones are for. So those are subscripts. So remember our slope formula, y, our m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1? Well, all those little subscripts are just labels. So the x1 and the y1 in this formula here are just labels. So we'll talk about that again on the next lesson. So again, for today's notes, we will use our knowledge of slope-intercept form to graph. And just as a reminder, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Okay? Um, now, previously, we learned how to uh, graph slope-intercept form with equations and inequalities. Um, with equations, you're always going to have a solid line, and there's no shading. But when we have inequalities, you have to shade and think about if you have a dashed or a solid line. Okay, so here we have slope intercept form, and just a reminder, it is called slope intercept form because it gives us m, which is the slope, and b, which is the y intercept. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and graph the following equations in point slope form. Um, the next lesson, we're going to just use this form and be able to just graph just looking at it. But today, we're going to go ahead and solve for y and get it into a slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b, the y is by itself. So the first thing I have to do is get the y by itself. So the first thing, or the first instinct I think of when I do this, is to distribute. So I'm going to have y plus 2 on this side, but then I'm going to have 3 times x, which gives me 3x, and then 3 times 2, which gives me 6. And then I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides to get the y by itself, and I have y equals 3x plus 4. And now I'm back at y equals mx plus b. My slope here is going to be positive 3 over 1 or negative 3 over negative 1. And my y-intercept is going to be 0 comma positive 4. Okay. So the first thing I always do is plot my y-intercept, so it's going to be at 0, positive 4. And then it doesn't look like I can graph using the first slope that I have, so I'm going to graph with negative 3 over negative 1. Again, that's why we write both slopes so that we have our choices so that we know we can go different directions. Oh, I went the wrong way. So we down 3 and to the left 1 because it's negative 1. So our rise is negative 3 and our run is negative 1. And then I want down 3 and then negative 1 again. And so here I have a straight line with my three points. Again, you can have more than the three, but I need at least three. And just a reminder, you always want to check your slope. So here our slope was positive, is a positive three, and our line is positive. So you want to make sure those two things match up. If you have a positive slope, you should have a positive line. With number two, we're going to do the same exact thing. Go ahead and draw a line down the middle there, and we're going to solve for our y value to get by its or y variable to get by itself. So we have y plus 3 equals negative 2 times x is going to be negative 2x. Negative 2 times 1 is going to be negative 2. And then here I'm going to go ahead and subtract both sides by 3. 
and we want to subtract it from the negative 2 because the x is not like terms with it. So y equals negative 2x minus 5. Just like over here, when we did the minus 2, we had to subtract it from the 6 because those are like terms. You cannot subtract it from the 3. So you can only subtract things if they're like terms or combine things if they're like terms. So here I have a slope. Whoops, go on. Here I have a slope of negative 2 over 1. We want to write it as a fraction. Or 2 over negative 1. So I have two options for slopes here. Come on. And then my y-intercept here is 0, negative 5. So I have 0, negative 5 as my y-intercept. Did I call it a y-intercept? I hope I did. And then it doesn't look like I can use the first slope, so I'm going to use the second one. Let me make sure I did everything correct because it looks a little funny. Okay, so I would go up 2 and then to the left 1 because it's negative 1. Up 2 to the left 2, up 2 to the left 2. Or up 2 to the right, to the left 1. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry if I'm confusing you. Sorry. Up 2, left 1 because it's negative. Okay. It's been a long day, right? It's 523. I'm still at school filming this video for you guys. It's going to be okay, but... uh. I'm having a little bit of brain farts, so excuse me if I uh, mess up on accident. So we want to make sure we draw a line through all these things. And again, it is solid because it is an equation, so you always have a solid line for equations. Okay, moving on. Let's keep going. So again, these are in point-slope form, and I just want to go back to those two forms, right? So we've learned two forms. We've learned slope-intercept, and we've learned point-slope. Now, visually, the biggest difference that they have with each other is that one of them has parentheses and the other does not. In slope-intercept form, I'm given an intercept, and in point-slope form, I'm given parentheses and no y-intercept. So again, if you see some parentheses, it's probably a strong indicator that it is probably in point-slope form. Now with this one, it looks a little bit scary because of the fraction, but you would do like what you would normally do. So you want to get that y by itself, but first you need to simplify by distributing. 1 half times x would just be 1 half x. 1 half times 6 is going to be positive 3. And let me copy down this side. Okay. And then I want to go ahead and get the y by itself by adding one of both sides. But I would add one to the 3 because those are the like terms. y equals 1 half x plus 4. Our y-intercept here is going to be 0, 4. And our slope here is going to be positive 1 over 2 or negative 1 over negative 2 plot my point, and I'm going a bit fast because we should know how to graph a slope-intercept form by now. So we have up 1 over 2, whoops, and actually, forgot, up 1 over 2, and we actually can keep going that way, but if you would like to use the other one, you may, so let me go ahead and use, I'm trying to figure out a color, I'm going to use pink. I can use this one as well. I can start back with the y-intercept and go down 1 and to the left to go to negative 2. So it does still make a straight line here. Okay, so our slope was 1 half. Okay, and it is a positive line because it's a positive slope. Looking at this equation here, it is a positive slope. I'll go ahead and highlight it on the other two as well. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Okay, number four, same thing, same thing over and over again, right? So go ahead and draw a line down that, and then let's go ahead and distribute. Negative one-third times x is negative one-third x. Negative one-third times negative nine, here's where we make a mistake. A negative times a negative is a positive. So negative one-third times negative nine is going to be positive three. Okay, and then the next step here is I would subtract 5 on both sides, but I would subtract it from the 3 because those are the like terms. Uh, 3 minus 5 is going to be negative 2. Okay, our slope here is negative 1 over 3. Now there is a negative there, and you just choose whether it's in the numerator or the denominator. So it's either negative 1 over 3 or 1 over negative 3. Our y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, negative 2. So I have a point at 0, negative 2. Okay. And then I'm going to use my slope 
of negative 1, 3. So that's going to be a rise of negative 1, so down 1, and then to the right, positive 3. And we can go down 1 to the right, 3. And then go ahead and draw a line through those. Okay, next one. Uh, y plus 1 third equals 4 thirds times x plus 1. So again, draw a line down this. Now I'm going to distribute 4 thirds times x is going to be 4 thirds x. I know this is a little scary because of all the fractions, but it's going to be okay. And then we have 4 thirds times 1, which is just 4 thirds. And then I'll copy everything down over here. Now I want to subtract that 1 third away. And when I subtract it, I'm going to subtract it from the 4 thirds that doesn't have an x to attach to it because those are the like terms. y equals 4 thirds x. And then we have 4 thirds minus 1 thirds, which is going to give us 3 thirds, right? Fractions. And if you don't know, you can always use your calculator. But 4 thirds minus 1 thirds is going to give me a whole 3 over 3, which is just simplified to 1. Our slope here is 4 over 3 or negative 4 over negative 3. And our y-intercept here is 0, comma, negative 1. So I have a point at 0, negative 1. And I'm going to use the slope um, positive 4 over positive 3. So I'm going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then to the left 3, or to the right 3, my bad, because I want to be positive, because it is positive on both ends. And then I'll go ahead and use baby blue. Negative 4, negative 3. So I'm going to start at my y-intercept again. I'm going to go down 4 and then to the left 3 because it's negative. And then you want to draw a line through those. So go ahead and draw a line here. Okay, so this is pretty easy, right? You just got to get it into slope-intercept form. All right, number six looks a little bit different from the rest of these. So earlier, we've just been having a number. So there's been some number over there every single time. However, there isn't one in this problem, but there really is a number over there. It's just a point slope form in disguise because there's no number and nothing as a number is zero. So this is point slope form, but y plus zero is just y and that's why there's no plus zero over there, but it's still point slope form. The benefit of it having a zero is that there's less work to do. So, let me go ahead and move this up. Whoops, did not mean to move the line up. There we go. So we're going to do 1 fourth times x, which is going to be 1 fourth x, and then 1 fourth times negative 12, which is going to be negative 3. Our slope here is positive 1 over 4, or negative 1 over negative 4. And then our y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 3. So we'll plot the point 0, negative 3 on here. And then we'll use our slope of 1 over 4. So up 1 to the right 4. And the reason why this, uh, the math for this one was so short was because we were able to see that our y was already by itself, and that was pretty easy for us. So we didn't have to do much work. I don't want to use pink. What should I use? Hmm. I already used purple. I guess I have to, use, I'll use lavender, I guess. Okay, negative 1, negative 4. So we start back with the y-intercept, go down 1 to the left 4. Okay, there's my line. And then on the last one, this looks even less in slope-intercept form, but I will prove to you that it really is slope-intercept form. It just looks a little bit different. This is really y plus 4 equals negative 2 x plus 0, right? Because negative 2 times x is negative 2x. But what's negative 2 times 0? Zero? 0. So this ended up going away, and that's why there's nothing over there. But it's still point slope form. It's just in disguise. So that just means there's less work for us to do, right? So how do I get the y by itself? Well, all I need to do here is just subtract 4. And I have y equals. And since negative 2x and negative 4 are not like terms, I just write them next to each other. Our slope here is negative 2 over 1 or 2 over negative 1. And our y-intercept here is 0, comma, negative 4. So I'm going to plot my y-intercept on the y-axis and use my slope of negative 2 over 1, so down 2 to the right 1 because it's a positive 1. And then let's go ahead and use the other one, 2, negative 1, up 2 to the left 1. 
and it is a negative line because it is a negative slope. And that is it. So that is graphing point slope form by solving for y. The next lesson will use point slope form, but using the slope and the point. If you have any questions, please um, come and see me for tutorials.